Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. It's September 13th, 2024. Let's talk football betting. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, what if I told you that the system betting, which I love, is set up for you to fail. What if I told you that that charismatic casino owner who's on sports betting shows talking about what a bad break some gamblers got last week in the survivor pool where they took the Cincinnati Bengals playing at home against the perceived hapless New England Patriots and how that Patriot upset was just a bad break for a lot of gamblers. What if I told you that that casino owner, and I don't blame him, is trying to take your money? Just like you're trying to take his money. That the gambling world is actually doggy dog. That the freebies you get at these casinos for being a regular customer statistically are far lower than your expected losses. That much of the wins and losses are quantified, that these casinos have an algorithm. So of course, they figure, okay, if this guy gambles this amount, he's gonna lose $500. Let's give him perks worth $100. Right now, let's be clear here. These contests and Wow, they are prestigious, aren't they? Right? You win the contest, you're getting hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not higher than that. You're getting the prestige of being able to walk around with everyone looking at you and saying, hey, that guy won that casino's mega tournament. Right? But what if the whole concept of betting on five games a week already has you on the wrong path. What if it's a loser compared to other options, right? Look, I come online here and I'll make predictions uh, on a weekly basis on games. I understand there's a crowd out there for that. I myself like to bet weekly, really more for entertainment value. But what if I told you that when it comes to making money, that's not the wise move. Let's think it through. Let's say you're getting back a minus 110 on your point spread bets in football. Right now, let's say you bet on one game a week and you bet the same amount every week. Let's say the regular season is 17 games. Right? We'll throw in a bye week. Let's say every week you win and you turn around and you bet the same amount the next week. Now let's pretend that it's not a minus 110. Let's pretend the payout is even money, plus 100, just so the math is easy. Well, you would 17x your money, right? You know, you win 100 the first week. You win 100 the second week, assuming you bet the same amount. You're not, you know, betting everything every week. Right, because if you do that, of course your return's going to be zero. Right, but let's say hypothetically you're betting a hundred dollars every week, and you win every week. You have seventeen x your money, folks. In futures, you have quality teams right now going off at better than plus seventeen hundred odds. Understand a futures better only has to be right once. And understand what being right means. People erroneously think that futures are only offered at the beginning of the year and that I make a bet. Let's say I take the Dallas Cowboys. By the way, right now, the Cowboys, who are 1-0, and who have signed Dak now, who have signed C.D. Lamb now, they are going off at a plus 1,600. Right? Think about it. Right? Plus 1,600. 
Well, people erroneously think that if I take the Dallas Cowboys and then they fade, things can happen. Dak could get hurt. Players could get suspended. C.D. Lamb could get hurt. The Cowboys could dominate a game, have four or five turnovers, and lose the game, even though they won the time of possession and had far more yardage, far more yards per play than their opponent. Right? People think that that's it. That you've lost that futures bet. Casino bosses will come on TV and they'll tell you, yeah, we love futures because our margin on futures betting is so much greater than our margin on weekly money line bets. Right? What they don't tell you is that they offer futures practically the whole year. You can make futures bets around Thanksgiving. What they don't tell you is, let's say I bet on the Cowboys and the opposite happens. I get them at 16 to 1 right now. That's just a smidge less than winning 17 straight weeks. $100 per week, the same 100 right? Think about it. You know, what are the odds of you winning 17 straight weeks to begin with? If I win on the Cowboys and I bet $100 at the beginning of the year, they cut me a check for $1,600. Now, some will say, hey, the Cowboys are just one team in a league, but what if I get 16 to 1 now? Then the Cowboys continue winning. Suddenly, people start looking at Mike McCarthy's win percentage with the Cowboys. Suddenly, people start realizing that Dak Prescott last year led the league in touchdowns. Right now, they have Dalvin Cook. By the way, that was Ezekiel Elliott scoring a touchdown week one. Right, we, we wrote off these guys in August in looking at the season. The odds makers did. But yet now Dallas has what could be an effective rushing attack to go with what we know is an effective passing attack. They just played a team that made the playoffs last year, a team coached by the coach of the year, Kevin Stefanski. Right? They played Cleveland in Cleveland. Folks, the Browns had no idea where Micah Parsons was going to be. Right? Browns pretty good team. Major sleeper. Major sleeper. Got beat. Right? Micah Parsons was a wrecking ball. You don't think that he's going to cause problems for other teams out there? You don't think that the Cowboys are going to have some games against teams not as good as the Browns who made the playoffs last year with Joe Flacco as quarterback? So, after week one, let's talk about some plays on the board here, right? Understand, the Cowboys at 16-1 by the end of the season, they might be going off at 6-1 to one or lower. You lock in 16-1 to one now, right? And this is after a win. Then, if you're savvy, and you pay attention to the futures market. Some teams are going to fall. Tua has another concussion. Folks, that's a five alarm fire. He just signed a big deal. Right? Talk about a swing in locker room sentiment. Let's say it takes him three to four weeks to come back. Folks, that's a huge chunk of the season. That's a month in a four month season. Right? Where, of course, teams like Buffalo in the division look like they're going to roll off a bunch of wins right now. Already have the jump head-to-head -head on the Dolphins. Some teams are going to fall out of futures. But my point to you is Miami has fallen off now. You can redeploy money to other teams. Right Now that you know Miami has fallen, now that you've seen Buffalo's defense against a high-powered offense. Right now that you realize what Buffalo can do. Right? You know, the point is simply you could put more money on Buffalo. By the way, you heard me say if you win every week and you bet $100 every week, 
right? And you're getting even money, which is better than you'd be getting. You would end up 17x, right? A plus 1700. Buffalo right now is a plus 1100, folks. That's after two games. That's after two wins. They're a plus 1100. So the people betting weekly, they're at a structural disadvantage. You have to be phenomenal weekly to get to the same place you are if you know what you're doing in futures. So let's talk about some teams now that we've actually seen them for a week. Now that situations have resolved themselves. As I said, before the season, we thought, wow, Dak hasn't gotten a contract. You know, how's that going to unfold? Right? You were looking at backups like Trey Lance and you thought, you know, Trey Lance isn't exactly Dak. You were looking at kids in college and you realized, I don't care how good the kid is. Right? Just look at Caleb's, Caleb Williams' numbers after his first week. Rookies have a tough time transitioning to the NFL. And you looked at the Cowboys and you thought, gee, you know, a lot of these guys are ready to win now. Right? Is Jerry going to keep Mike McCarthy if he loses Dak and has to rebuild? Folks, those questions have been addressed, haven't they? Dak's back. CD's back. So, after week one, here's some teams I'm targeting. Right? Because the lines are completely ridiculous. Again, just keep in mind, you win $100 every week at a even money payout, which is better than you're getting because casinos are in business to make the VIG. There is a VIG. You usually get a minus 110. You 17x. That's if you're perfect. With that in mind, folks, the best bet on the board, believe it or not, even with the lawsuit, remains the Cleveland Browns. Last week, they were 40-1. to 1. They lost, right? They lost to a team that last year, like them, made the playoffs, right? This week, they're 55-1. to 1. They're a plus 5,500. They play Jacksonville. Now, I agree. This bet could blow up on you. If they lose to Jacksonville, a team I think they should beat, 0-2 is going to be tough. Or is it? I thought I saw the Ravens lose. I thought I saw Cincinnati lose. Right? The Steelers, God bless them. They don't strike me as the best team in the division. Right? Understand. The Browns lost last week. They didn't lose ground on two of their biggest rivals in the NFL. They've gone from 40 and 45 to 1 to now 55 to 1. You know, I think that's the best bet on the board. Let's talk about another uh, team that you're getting at an incredible bargain. I saw the Niners on the ropes in the playoffs last year against the Green Bay Packers. Now, Jordan Love did get hurt, and he's an incredibly important player, right? He did get hurt, but he avoided serious injury. We didn't hear torn ligament, torn tendon. There are no reports of Jordan Love being out for the year, right? Also, this isn't an injury like a concussion where the guy has already had two bad concussions and there are questions about the player's size, right? No, no, this is a big quarterback. This isn't a head injury. Green Bay right now is going off at not 17 to 1. No, they're going off at 35 to 1. Right, folks, in their division, and I know many of you disagree with me, um, shout out to all of the subscribers who have said, hey, Dwyer, what about the Lions? Right, folks, the Lions were pushed into OT week one, weren't they? You know, let's just say the Lions look good. 
But given that the team really was outside the norm last year, are you sure they're not going to regress back to the mean? Understand, they're not the only team in that division that made the playoffs last year. Right? Green Bay 35 to 1 with the possibility of Jordan Love coming back sooner than later. Right? I like that. Let's talk about another team that I think you need to take a look at. This is in the other direction. The Dolphins, they're now 30 to 1. Right, folks? The Tua situation is major. You need a quarterback who can get the ball to Tyreek Hill. This offense is really premised on the quarterback being able to throw to excellent receivers. Right? Archain, the running back, is really a smaller speed guy. You need the quarterback and passing game to take pressure off of him so that the defense is on its heels and this smaller back can then run through holes and make it happen. Right? Tua is a foundational player for the Dolphins. Now, I expect Green Bay, excuse me, New England to return to the mean, right? I'm expecting New England to have a tough year this year. But wow, folks, the Jets lost to, in my opinion, the best team in football week one. Are you sure they're not going to be a force? Buffalo looks like a force to me, right? Let's just say I won't be investing additional dollars into the Dolphins for some time until I'm convinced that Tua can return at a high level. Let me also say, too, the fact that Tua signed a big contract that had nine figures of guaranteed money tells me the team is not going to rush him back out there. Right? The guy's had a number of bad concussions. You know Tua wants to get back out on the field. I'm guessing the Dolphins are going to err on the side of keeping him out an extra game rather than rushing him back into the lineup. Let's talk about another team I'm sticking a fork in. 22 to 1 Cincinnati. Folks, I I'm just telling you, they play KC this coming week. That New England game's troubling because it's not a fumble game. It's not a fluke game. New England looked like the better team in the first quarter, the second quarter, the third quarter, the fourth quarter. New England dominated that game. Right? I, you know, now they're going to play a KC team where I'm sure, you know, Pat Mahomes in public is, you know, polished. He's not going to look like he has a personal grudge against any player or any team or that he's competing with any other competitor. Folks, uh, you know, Cincinnati beat KC in the playoffs one year. Right? KC, I'm sure, privately feels that should have been our year. What were we doing losing that game? I think the Bengals start the season 0-2. Now, what I said earlier does matter, right? In their division, you know, Tomlin's a magician, but come on now, Justin Fields, you know, Russell Wilson didn't even play week one. Now Russell's supposed to play. I don't see the Steelers running away with that division. I'll agree, Cincinnati's still in the mix since the Ravens lost and the Browns lost, right? But at 0-2, has Jamar Chase gotten a new deal yet? I question Cincinnati. No more money from me on Cincinnati until Burrow shows me he's back in the saddle. Let's remember he missed time last year due to injury and the team looks motivated. 
Let's talk about some other teams. You know, let me say this too about the Jets, who I mentioned. Right? 49er Nick Bosa, who's not a guy who runs off at the mouth, actually had the audacity to say before this week's game, Niners are playing the Vikings, that he thought they were playing a better team than the Jets, who the Niners beat week one. Right, folks? The public needs to realize that the Jet head coach used to be the head of the defensive unit for the 49ers, right? I don't have any inside information, but understand some of these comments that sound objective might actually be motivated by some grudges, right? A few weeks ago, didn't Tua reach out at Brian Flores and say, hey, that guy's a terrible human being, <laughs> right? Nick Bosa, of course, slaps back at the Jets. Uh, I don't take it seriously. Just understand, the Jet defense is highly regarded. Just understand, where the Niners play, it's very hard for an opposing offense because it has one of the league's higher noise levels. Right, The Jets were 3,000 miles away from home and they lost to the reigning NFC champions. Right, I think the Jets are well positioned. I think people need to look at them. Understand you're getting them after a loss. Let's talk about a team that has a 4,000 passing yard quarterback. That's what he threw for last year, folks. That's going off at 60 to 1. You heard right, not 17 to 1, no, 60 to 1. That one week one, that still has great wide receivers, a great passing game. That's the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Right now, let me just say, I myself have doubts on Tampa, but I'm not going to fight the tape. Right, Tampa at 60 to 1, I'm getting compensated for the risk. Why not throw a dollar on Tampa? Why not throw $5 on Tampa? If you're looking at expected winnings of $300 off a $5 play, right, I'm just telling you if Tampa wins week two, you're not going to get close to 60 to 1. If you're in a position later in the year where Tampa's still alive, and you have the chance of winning $300 on Tampa if they're able to pull the miracle. That gives you ample opportunity to make money betting on the other team. Right? So Tampa makes the playoffs. They're playing against some team. You realize that because of your $5 bet on Tampa in September, you have a chance of $300 upside. Let's say Tampa's playing a team on the road that you think they're going to lose to. You can say, hell, why don't I bet $100 on this team in this game? Right? Understand how it goes, too. Because futures bets are based on winning the whole thing, or you could have it so that you win the conference. Right? You'll be betting money line bets, which are different than spread bets. So let's say Tampa is a juggernaut. And let's say... They change a lot of minds and they're favored at home in the playoffs. And I have some visiting team that's supposed to lose the game. I'm going to be getting leverage. Right? Leverage on the other side of the hedge. So let's say the money line is a plus 150. I can say, hell, I'm looking at $300 in possible winnings on the Tampa side. Why don't I bet $50 here? At a plus 150, if I win, I win $75. What am I out on the whole thing? I got the $300 worth of possible winnings on Tampa for $5 in September. Let's talk about a couple other teams. Well, at least one other team. The San Francisco 49ers. Folks, believe it or not, 
even though no team in the Super Bowl era has won three Super Bowls in a row, the team favored to win the Super Bowl is still KC. You mean I'm getting the Niners, <laughs> and they weren't close to full strength week one. Understand, Brandon Ayuk hadn't been playing in the preseason because he was, you know, uh, trying to get a new deal, and they gave him a new deal. Understand, the league's lead rusher, Christian McCaffrey, didn't even play against the Jets. Brock Purdy came out, looked surgical. <laughs> Jets ran away with the game. You mean to tell me I'm getting San Francisco at a plus 575? Has anyone looked at their schedule? Folks, this is high. By the time you get to December, I'm expecting to get no better than a plus 400 on the Niners. So here, although the Niners are one of the favorite teams, I believe you want to grab this. Right? Just like you want to grab the Buffalo Bills at 11 to 1. Now that you know Miami's weakened. Right? Don't, don't fixate on the fact that the Bills lost at home in the playoffs to Pat Mahomes. That the Bills had everything they wanted. They were at home and could not close the show. Right? Don't fixate on the fact that Stefan Diggs has left town. Right? You just saw them against one of their arch rivals. And folks, could the defense have looked better than it did Thursday night? Right? If they're playing at that level of defense, and of course you have a Pro Bowl quarterback, <coughs> you have a future Hall of Famer at quarterback, right? If the team's going to play like that, this is a gift, right? 11 to 1 on the Bills, you're getting far more quality back at leverage than you would betting any individual game on a point spread this week. So those are my thoughts. We'll revisit this as the season goes along, right? But right now, after week one, the teams I'm looking at, Tampa Bay, 60 to one, Green Bay, 35 to one. These are not the only teams. These are the teams where after week one, I'm thinking, okay, I'm not a firm believer in Tampa, but at 60 to 1, I'll make the concession here and put money down on Tampa, right? After week one, Tampa, Green Bay, Niners, Dallas, Jets, Buffalo, Cleveland, right, folks? 55 to 1. I want you to think to yourself how many teams have a better defense than Cleveland? Right, think about the AFC for a moment. How many teams in the AFC have a better defense than Cleveland? Right, okay, Baltimore maybe, right, you know. Think it through. If you can't name three teams with a better defense than Cleveland in the conference, this 55-1 to one bet makes itself, doesn't it? Folks, Deshaun Watson is still in his 20s. Right? The um, new lawsuit um, hasn't led to him being suspended this week. He's expected to play. Right? Just, you know, Amari Cooper is still on the team. Right? You're already... One game down, Nick Chubb is likely to be back within the next four games. This is a team that made the playoffs last year. They're telling you a playoff team with one of the conference's best defenses. Isn't Miles Garrett still on the team? Isn't this secondary still among the best? They're telling you that a team that made the playoffs last year with the coach of the year, with one of the best defenses, is a 55-1 to long shot. With a quarterback that's been a pro bowler. you got to be kidding me. Those are my thoughts. I am fading the Dolphins. I am fading Cincinnati. Right? Maybe they'll prove me wrong. Maybe the backup to the Dolphins will come in and look magnificent. 
Maybe the Bengals will look inspired against the chief team that has a grudge and has one of the better defenses in the conference. Maybe not. Those are my thoughts. Let me hear yours in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.